On the big story tonight, we're discussing the People's Assembly that's been proposed by the National Super Alliance. My guests are still with me, the County Speaker of Kisumu County Assembly, Onyango Olo, as well as David Kosing, who's the Pokot South Member of Parliament. But joining the show tonight is a strategist at NASA, that's David Ndi. He joins me now live from our city centre studios. David, good evening and thank you for making the time to be with us tonight. Let's start off by understanding the main purpose and the agenda of the proposed People's Assembly. Thank you, Yvonne. First of all, I, I want to make a small correction. The, the People's Assembly is not a proposal. We, we are not proposing it to other people. It, uh, we are establishing it. OK? Yep. So it is not something up for discussion with other people especially with Jubilee. It is something that we are establishing uh, separately and uh, parallel to, to Jubilee government. Um, what, why are we establishing or uh, setting as, ourselves as a people's assembly? Uh, I think history and context is important. Uh, I was just uh, counting and realized it took uh, the Kenyatta administration, Jomo Kenyatta administration after independence seven years to dismantle the, the, the independence constitutional framework and establish uh, a one-party dictatorship. That was from 64 to 69. Uh, it's taken us seven years uh, to dismantle uh, the 2010 constitution and set ourselves up, Jubilee has set itself up to become a one-party dictatorship. Uh, because once they've been able to accomplish what they have done with the 2017 election, there is absolutely no reason for them not to do it again and again and again and uh, retain power for, for as long as they can. Uh, Kenyatta and Moi uh, governed for 40 years. Uh, Uhuru and Ruto have promised that uh, themselves that they must govern for at least 20. So in those circumstances, you have, as we have said, uh, from the outset, the country is now divided between those who will accept that as a fait accompli and those of us who have said that we will not accept that as a fait accompli. So the People's Assembly is the political forum of those of us who have, not, have refused to accept uh, that uh, political uh, trajectory as, as a fait accompli. What will be the main agenda that will be discussed, because you did say something that it is something, obviously you're not seeking the consent or um, advice of the Jubilee government. You said it's parallel to the Jubilee government, but what would be the outcome at the end of it, um, after their formation, deliberations, discussions, resolutions, what's the end game? The People's Assembly is not a meeting. It's, what a, it's is a body. It? Uh -huh. It's a body. It's a political body. OK? And uh, it is anchored in the Constitution, Article 1 to 3, as well as on uh, Article 37, I think, uh, on, uh, on, on, on freedom of assembly. So it is an assembly, as it is said. You can think about the National Assembly is not a meeting. It's a body. So the People's Assembly is going to be a body uh, in the manner of the National Assembly. And it's a body that will do what? It's a body that will, we will uh, represent ourselves politically and, and discuss uh, and deliberate and make resolutions about how we want to proceed uh, politically. So those of us who do not uh, recognize uh, the Jubilee uh, uh, executive, national executive, uh, will decide our political way forward uh, where will we meet to discuss the political way forward for ourselves? Uh, we will be meeting in the People's Assembly, as, as the People's Assembly. Is it a parallel government? It's a parallel political institution. At the end of it, because you've said it's a body, what would it be able to do? What would be its resolutions, I would ask again. I mean, it's a body, like you said, the National Assembly is also a body that passes laws. It is not a laws. project. Uh -huh. It is not a project. Political institutions are eternal. So it will exist 
as long as the gold, we have said that quite clearly, it will exist until a con what we consider a constitutional government is reestablished in Kenya. So it has two ends. Either it will end up with a political transformation of Kenya as we know it, or it will end up into separation of uh, two countries which do not agree on how they should uh, land themselves. Okay. Um, I'd like some reaction here. David, stay with me for just a moment. I want to uh, get some reaction from the guests I'm with here in studio. David Pukosing, I'd like to start with you. You see, and I really respect uh, D, but he's struggling even himself to explain what it is. He's not even answered you. Because these things are mobbers, it's a waste of time. It is actually delaying you know, actions. It is lying to but the people. But he says it is parallel to the Jubilee government for How? those that do not... Um, but, uh, hang on. Yes. For those that do not... Um, Consider the Jubilee government as one that is constitutionally but, constitutional. But based on what, what now? Based on what? Because, you know, everything must be based on law. Our constitution, which we made, right, and in fact it was being even spearheaded by that particular time in the 10th parliament, by the leadership now who are in NASA. The, this constitu constitution uh, uh, sees formation of government in four ways. Either the general election, you form a government, or uh, Arirang, if you don't get the, 20, the 50% plus, or if somebody dies, or a court like what we have now. There is no other, read Article, uh, article 3 of the Constitution, there is no other mechanism or method. Even this Nusumkade thing they wanted, it's not being pro provided for in law. Even this, uh, 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 whatever you call it, assembly, is not provided by law. In fact, what's the difference between this one and what you see in Chibanji Gardens and uh, Uru Park and anywhere? You know, because the question which these guys cannot answer. What is the structure? What are they supposed to do? Are they legislating? Legislating what? For who? Are they collecting resources? For who and how? It is just trying to tell their people there's something we are doing. But actually, they're doing nothing. They're only delaying. They're only actually expressing frustration. But in he's my also view. talked about it being um, a source for them to perhaps consider breaking away if they feel unhappy. And the question of cessation comes up once again. You see, but that's not the, that's not the method. And it's not, even cessation is not provided for. In this constitution. What would be the method of cessation <laughs> if it's not provided you see, for in the constitution? It's, it's not. Yeah. Kenya. So there is no cessation in your mind. In my mind, it's, it's okay. not. It's not. It's not going to happen. Any cessation will not happen in this right. country. Okay. Can't. It's not. It's not because people want to manage their frustrations. Let me tell you this and allow me so that Wakili can Please. come in. Yes. You know, we, this is not our first election. We've been having elections since independence, right? So if we are, if we disagree with this election, it is not the way they want to do. It, but we can allow them because they are. They are trying to release anger and frustrations. Maybe after 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 okay. after Uru Kenyatta is sworn in as a president, give it maybe another few few weeks, they would be okay and All we'll right. go back to our country. Okay, David, Onyango? You know, I find it so difficult to engage my brother Kosing. I don't know either he is just going around or he doesn't understand issues. When you he says that the cessation of the, is not provided for in the law. I wonder which it's law not. he's talking it's about. Not. Just a moment. Or uh, which lawmaker he is. Under this very Constitution 2010, international treaties that have been ratified by this parliament become part of our laws. May I inform you that under the International Treaty on Civil and Political Rights, the right to self-determination is a right available to a people who feel that they are alienated from mainstream government. <laughs> so it is part of our law, if you didn't know. And secondly, a question you are struggling with, I don't know what answer you want. Uh, Mr. Ndi has given you, I have given you, but now let me make it clear. First, as the Nasa fraternity, or a people who believe the state has been captured, we do not recognize the government as established under the 26th October elections. So to that end, the People's Assembly is coming up to establish institutions that would lead us to establishing a proper democratic government that answers to the words democratic state. That is the ultimate objective of the People's Assembly, to release or free the state institutions from its captures and lead to a truly free and a democratic state called the Republic of Kenya. Right. Failing which, uh -huh. the people will still be 
free to discuss the right to self-determination, which is provided for in the very constitution that Mr. Kosin carried here. I thought he was reading it. He seemed not to be reading it. Okay, let me um, hear from David Ndee for a moment. Uh, David, the issue of funding of the People's Assembly is one that has come up. In fact, Majority Leader Adan Duale wrote to the Controller of Budget, uh, raising concerns about the funding of, of this and saying this is coming from county funds. What's, what's your reaction to those concerns that have been raised by the Majority Leader? I don't know what he thinks it is, so that he can determine what, what, how it is funded, uh, because he doesn't know. Um, I said the People's Assembly is an institution. It is not a project. So uh, if people decide to be meeting, we have said that, for instance, it's going to have its inaugural convention soon. Uh, it doesn't require state funding for people to convene at a place of their choice. Uh, we convene all the time uh, at a place of their choice and deliberate. And if we decide the People's Assembly will be convening monthly or quarterly, that really is our business. I think the fact that we have made it absolutely clear it is not their business, it is our business. I am quite intrigued at why they are bothered, how we do it. It is really none of their business, quite frankly. Be that as it may, David, uh, a court in Kitui has stopped the motions on the formation. What's your response to that, and what's your next move then? Uh, as far as I'm aware, courts cannot uh, interfere with uh, parliamentary uh, debate. In fact, I believe there is a very strong ruling by Speaker Moturi to that effect. Um, so these are antics. As I said, what we are seeing is, again, encroachment uh, of uh, undermining, uh, for instance, here, separation of powers, the supremacy of legislatures vis-a-vis -vis the judiciary. If they pass a law, uh, people can challenge that law in court and its, its legality and constitutionality seen. But you cannot stop uh, legislatures from uh, deliberation. Now, the, I think fundamentally, uh, the, what people are trying to preempt is they think that this is a, a state process. It is not a state process. It is a people process. And the state is not above the people. The people form the state. They can also assemble and deal with their governance issues in other forums of their choosing. As I said before, uh, the People's Assembly, in, from where we see it, is anchored in Article 1, 2, and 3 of the Constitution. In Article 1, we say sovereignty can be exercised directly. People can exercise their sovereignty directly or through democratically elected representatives. We have the view that Uhuru Kenyatta is not democratically elected. He has usurped power. Uh, so we have to say, ask, since he has usurped power, how do we exercise our sovereignty? And it is up to us to do how, uh, it how we choose. It is not up to Jubilee to persuade us uh, that their government uh, is uh, legitimate and we should recognize it and we should cooperate with it. We have made it very clear that we will not. So they should just leave us alone to go about our best business the best way we know how. David? My gosh, we have two Davids. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm referring to <laughs> Mashima Kosing. You see. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, you see, they're even finding it difficult even to explain what it is. And uh, I want also to correct them. But nobody is interfering with them. We are not interested. Right? We, we're just coming for discussion. But we, uh, nobody is really bothered, let me be honest. But before I say that, I also want to remind my, my, my colleague, uh, speak, Honorable Speaker, for Kisumu. That you see, uh, uh, by him insinuating that maybe Mashima Gosing has not read the Constitution, that is wrong to, uh, to insinuate like that to me. And, and that maybe I don't know what I'm discussing. I think he's, uh, he's agitated that himself, uh, being a lawyer, does not even understand what he's talking about. I think, uh, and, 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 and I'm very surprised. He used to be good when I know him. I don't know when, <laughs> when he went back to Kisumu. But, but I'd, the question. I'd like your response also to David and Dee's uh, mm -hmm. statements, talking about the separation of powers and that the court cannot stop people who want to assemble. You see, I have to read that order, personally, you know. But that is an illegality. That is an illegal process. 
if you pass something which is not, uh, what is it, you know, even I'm finding it very difficult even to justify what it is. You know, those people who are uh, uh, in county assemblies, they are paid by the state. Him is being paid by the state. I don't know what he was adjudicating when he was a speaker, when people are passing something which is not even anchored in law. In fact, if they were paid that particular day, then they were, that is an illegal payment. Because uh, 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 programs and, 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 and business is, is, is properly discussed. So what are you saying? That if uh, they don't believe in these institutions, what are you asking of Onyango Olo because you're saying he's paid by the state, which is correct? You, you are see, you saying they have that no, they should resign and abandon their posts? And No, it's up to them. It is, it is them. What we are saying is that we have one constitution, mm -hmm. right? This is the constitution that dis defines and designs the country called Kenya. What do you think of the funding and, issue that... that Yes. Your majority leader has raised. You, you, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That uh, you asked me a question, which I want to also plead mm -hmm. with them. And, and in fact, we don't want to convince them that they are part of the country, right? And th in my view, this is only management of uh, frustrations. And maybe in the next six months, this country will be very different. But this is the this is the one that is uniting us, as a country of Kenya. And so long as we have this one constitution, we need to live with it. Those people who are trying to practice word democracy and they don't want the constitution to be implemented, then they are wrong by establishing things which are not provided for in law. In fact, and I, I, that's what I'm what's the difference between this one and Jivanji discussion? What's the difference? And uh, as I said earlier, what I'm going to say, let, wait one, 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 one minute, or maybe half a, half a month, or, a, or even six months. Then you ask yourself, what happened with those things called People's Assembly? Where is it going to be? Where is it? Who is administering? Where, what proposals are so they you having? Where will they take? don't think an idea that will last? It will not last. OK. You know, you're asking him questions which he's evading. And I don't want to be untoward to him. When he says they are not bothered about it, and their own leader of majority in parliament takes time to address issues, takes time to write a letter to the uh, controller uh, uh, of budget to ensure that monies are not given to this uh, uh, body. Is that uh, the action or reaction of a man who, or a, a, a party who is not bothered about what the I'll other persons that. are not doing? I will explain that. Secondly, he is constantly reminding us that this thing is not but rest in the Constitution. Uh, Mr. David D has repeatedly informed him or reminded him of Article no. 1, Article 2, Article 3, and above all, Article yes. 38, yes. which yes. provides for political rights. Those are which provided is. for in the Constitution. When he talks that secession is not available, for us to discuss. And I remind him that this very constitution domesticates international treaties and conventions. And I remind him of the International Treaty on Civil and Political Rights. Uh, what answer does he want from us? All right, so that me... is why we are telling him, as a people, as a, the NASA but... fraternity, we do not recognize the illegitimate government okay. that was established. I think your point on that has been made. You wanted to respond to that. Yes. The, the question about the majority leader uh, writing to the controller budget. Yeah, before I, re I respond to, to him, I think the line to Kenyans, and, and this is the constitution. And let me just read, if, like, like Article 3, they are talking about every person has an obligation to respect and uphold this constitution. Yes. Which is providing for the systems of government which we have. Uh, Uru Kenyatta was democratically elected, and that is why the election was upheld by the Supreme Court. They cannot lie to, to, to us or, or the country. If they are not happy with the election of Uru Kenyatta, we have no problem with them. That is fine. And that is why they are venting their frustrations in that way. And we are allowing them to proceed with venting uh, frustration okay. for about two or three weeks or All one right. or three months. I have five and minutes. then the country will come. Actually, but answering, answering that, yes. answering, let's, let's answering that question rebuttal. of my majority leader, yeah. you know, and, and under the Constitution, we have the power of uh, 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 oversighting national government and national government budget. Mm -hmm. And if we feel that the, the money of national government is not uh, uh, properly being utilized, then we, will query, we are not querying their, their uh, uh, bungalow of Mananji, and by we know it's not going nowhere. The leader of majority, with responsibilities provided for under Article 95 of the Constitution, is trying to say, hey, Auditor General, make sure that the resources of the country is not being used wrongly. But with the establishment of their People's Assembly, they can even proceed, they can do. Because we understand that is only a frustration for a while and they'll come back to sense and we'll respect this constitution okay so we have a minute to go for each of you strictly a minute onyango mm -hmm. i'd like to start with you the same question i posed to david d a short while ago the court in kitui has you know put an injunction to this matter it'll be heard again in january what's your next move they have no authority to injunct <laughs> parliamentary procedures that is null and void and the people have no obligation to obey and just laws. And number two, uh, the, uh, the leader of majority has got no authority to 
write on behalf of Parliament if no motion has been oh, passed yes. to that effect. We have the speaker, we have the clerk to do that job. Uh, secondly, I, I, if I may conclude, let me remind my brothers in Jubilee that they who refuse to learn from history and in, but insist that they want to be makers of history will soon learn the harsh way through history's uh, lessons. Thank you. David D. Uh, still at our city centre studios, uh, a minute to give us your final thoughts. First of all, I want to comment that the language that uh, David, my friend David Kosing is using, language of allowing us, is a language of autocracy. They have no business allowing or disallowing us anything. We are free people in a free country. Um, two, uh, Article 2 of the Constitution talks about sovereignty being exercised at the national level and at the county level. So the sovereignty exercised at the county level is not subject to national supervision. Um, county or governments and people sitting in counties can act autonomously, uh, exercise sovereignty, and the decisions they make there are binding on them and their county. There is no national supervisor for what uh, counties uh, do. They are elected, as the Constitution is very clear, the two levels of government are interdependent. Not, there's not which is subservient uh, to the other. Uh, thirdly, I'll conclude by pointing out exactly uh, what I said at the outset. This is not a legal or state issue. This is about politics. The politics of a society whose nation building has failed. Uh, in the last two months, our 25 year um, sort of experiment uh, trying to become a multi-party democracy has collapsed. That is a political question to be addressed outside of government. Yeah, it is not something to be run uh, in, uh, with, state, with sort of state structures. So how we reconstitute uh, ourselves, whether we will reconstitute ourselves as one uh, state with uh, national aspirations or as with a different character or same character, or whether we will then decide that this uh, nation building experiment itself is failed in its entirety, that is a debate uh, we can have uh, at some point in the future. But we are going to have it uh, amongst ourselves first. Okay. Um, and how okay. we have it is really none of Jubilee's business. All right, thank you. David and Dee, finally, David Kosing, I give you the last word. Yes, uh, I, I, I say thank you, uh, Yvonne. And, and in my view, I would say this thing will fade away. It's only management of frustration for a while. And once uh, Uru Kenyatta, his excellent the president, is sworn in on 28, he has already said himself he's going to unite the country. He will reach everywhere. Kisumu, West Pokot, everywhere will bring our country together. And in fact, bring the country together, we will move forward. Number two, they cannot blackmail the, the country and the people by trying to threaten us. Oh, you know, secession, oh, no, you know this. This, in my view, these are threats that actually will sell to what I would say, blackmailing. You cannot blackmail society. We have to negotiate. Parliament now is there. They are coming, we are coming back next week. We will debate some of these issues. We will look and say, maybe we need to amend some uh, issues in the Constitution. For example, maybe provide a win-win situation. Uh, look, uh, we are asking ourselves, if a presidential candidate, for example, should we not allow him to stand as, a, as an MP or senator, for example, so that maybe if he loses, he can still come back. For example, now, uh, Tinga might even come back in National Assembly, becomes the leader of minority, he will have uh, the trappings of power, he will participate. So maybe this... So you're this, open to having we are, discussions around the... Of course, the National Assembly and Parliament is a house of debate. Right. They will, this is our country, uh, Yvonne, and we are appealing to both NASA and Jubilee mm -hmm. that let us give our president an opportunity to unite the country. Okay. But this idea of shenanigans and threats, and uh, finally, I, I think when, when people come to talk to the nation and the yeah. people, mm -hmm. let us quote the right part of the Constitution. Okay. What, what D is saying, Article 2, is uh -huh. not Article 2. Right. He is wrong. 
Okay, thank you. David Kosing, Pokot South Member of Parliament, Onyango Law Speaker of the Kisumu County Assembly. I thank you, as well as David D, who's a strategist at NASA. Gentlemen, I thank you for this conversation tonight. We indeed wait to see what happens um, with uh, the formation of the People's Assembly and indeed with the mandate that President Uhuru Kenyatta now has following his swearing in next week on the 28th of this month. Thanks for watching The Big Story. That's our time tonight. Up next is uh, KTN Prime. Lindo Gutu is next time. Yvonne Okwara, Matale, good night. <laughs>